Yeah, the series is Algiers America. It is now on Hulu. All five episodes uh, have dropped. That's Jackson Fager. He is the producer and director behind it. That is Coach Norman Randall, who uh, one of the stars of the series. Look, <laughs> Coach Randall, I want to start with you. You're a guy that we've seen around a lot around the city. Obviously, you've been with this incredibly successful team. But I think a lot of us maybe didn't know who the guy was, but, you know, behind the, the coach's headset yeah. until this series. From your standpoint, how authentic was the series? How did it come out in a way that you're proud of, in a way that you're okay with how the team and how the coaching staff is portrayed? Yeah, I think... Uh to be honest with you, Doug, it, it was really intimate, but Jackson never overstepped boundaries. It was always, you know, this this is what we want to do. We want to catch you doing this. And then sometimes he would just pop the camera in while I'd be in the middle of a speech. And, and I told him from day one, whatever we're going to do, I'm going to be myself. And, you know, the kids and the parents of our community kind of know that. You know, we have an open door policy over there. So I think it was really good for Jackson to catch those moments where we didn't really care if the camera was there. Yeah, and you could tell that from watching it. I mean, it, it certainly felt like everything I was seeing was real. Look, Jackson, we talked about this. I thought there were two amazing and sort of eye-opening moments in this series. The first one involved you. It was in episode two, and you're with a group of players, and they're just going out on a, on a night, and there's gunshots. And... One of the players says, and this just hit home, just as a New Orleanian, he said, this is what we have to go through just to see some girls. I mean, it was a moment of real that 17-year-olds should not have to deal with. Take me back to that. What was that night like? Uh, it's, um, it was a really important moment to catch because a lot of these kids don't go out at night. And for the reasons that you see in the show, uh, in the two years we filmed, as you see in the show as well, there are two kids that are murdered on the team. And, you know, I, I was worried about going out with them because a lot of them stay in. And we only went out two times with the kids in the two years that we were filming, two times. And that's what happened on one of the nights we went out. And so, you know, what's a better way to show you what these kids are up against when you see that? firsthand yeah and they're they're sort of laughing their way through it but it but man it's laughing on the other side on the other side of tears and norm the other one and i hate to bring this up again because i know it's a hard moment mm -hmm. but in episode five after after kiran dies um th there's a moment where you doubt look we've seen five episodes of you guys doing incredible work as a coaching staff and you're still doubting it in that moment when you see that now on tv how does it affect you um you said it was hard watching that episode. I'm sure it was. Yeah, I watched that last episode in pieces, you know, that being so tough, me being so close to Kiran. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's almost a thing to where you, you doubt as you go through your career because you can't play with life. It's so precious. And I mean, we can win all the state championships you want, but that has nothing to do with, you know, him going home to his mother and his sister and his brother at night, and that would never happen again. And so at times when those kind of things happen, you question, did I make the right decision? Should I have called him that night? Should I have been by his side? Should we have kept him at practice later? Should we have followed him home? And just those little details of when anything tragic happens, you second guess your movements of that day. You know, that day I was actually, you know, leaving practice going home. You know, maybe I should have kept him for a later meeting. Maybe we should have had a one-on-one -on -one with had dinner. You know, you just, it goes through your mind because you never, ever, ever want that to happen again. But like you said, the state of, of our community and where we're living now, you know, that these things are happening often, uh, 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 too often. Yeah, no, yeah, no question about that. And, and it's not just your staff. There's a lot of New Orleans high schools that they're dealing with a lot of things where the most important thing is, is to make the kids lunch and, to, and right, those right. kind of things. Um, it almost has to be a calling more than, I mean, it's gotta be a whole lot more than football for you to wanna yeah. do this, right? Yeah, it's just about, you know, I'm a graduate of Edna Carr. I started there in 1997 when they were junior high, and, and that's what they were known for. But when I left and I came back, it was to give them answers that I felt like I didn't have when I was there. And that's no shot to anybody that taught me or coached me, but you learn a lot going to college. You learn a lot going through life as you become a man. And my whole goal was not financially to go back. There's no real financial money in that, not to be rich, right? You can make a living, 
but it's to get our kids more resources. And I tell people this all the time, Jackson coming, shooting a show, letting those kids narrate the show is one thing, but having a resource of having him now and his team, because we have kids on our team that want to do film. They want to be on TV. They want to edit. They want to be uh, the cameraman. And so there would be days after practice where they would be huddled around him, five, six guys, no camera, just trying to pick his brain because now they, they become and they see something like, that's TV. Oh, wait, this is real. I can do this. Oh, yeah. And I, so I think, like, you being here and him, like, y'all give our kids resources other than sports. I coach sports because that's what I'm good at. But there's a lot of other resources they feel like they can't get out. And so instead of telling our kids you have to play football, basketball, baseball to get a scholarship, that's not true anymore. Yeah. You know, with the Internet and social media and the ability to create for yourself with YouTube and things like that, I think him coming was a blessing. Yeah, well, and look, I, well, you say it in the show, you're going to get, even on a great year when you might get 10 kids a college scholarship, maybe one of them is actually going to make a living playing football. But you know what? You're going to have 15 kids be accountants and businessmen. Right. I mean, there's a lot. And, and you guys, like, that. that's the message you're hitting the team much more than even the football, right? I think that's what makes us good in football, is <laughs> that it's, it's not all about football. If you ask our kids, you know, your coaches, do they all care about football? Yeah, we're hard on them. It's very disciplined. It's a lot of practice. But a lot of our conversations are about life outside of football. You know, the mistakes that we made be better than us. They go to tutoring every single day from four to five o'clock. You know, we have teachers on staff that come and get paid to help them progress. And so before we even touch the field, we get out at 345, they're touching right back in the classroom after they leave roll call. So uh, I think that's part of our success, but our message of our program has totally changed from winning state championships to trying to help kids find resources. Yeah, and, and it is possible to do both at the same time. Right, You've right. proven that. Look, Jackson, last time we talked, I asked you about what kind of reception you had had, and you said you don't care about the national perceptions, only local. I, I want to hear what, what you're hearing nationally. Look, you're hearing stuff. The, the series, I know it's gotten good reviews, and it's gotten good reviews nationally. What have you heard, and how proud, now that all five episodes have dropped and people have got to see the whole thing and, and what you were trying to do from beginning to end, what is the reception, and how do you feel about it at this point? Well, I'm, I'm immensely proud of what we've done. Um, I was with Bryce at breakfast the other day, and two people, two different people came up to him and thanked him for what he's doing. The, the, honestly, like the national part of this is nice, but it's the reception in the city, sure. which be, has been so wonderful because New Orleans people are critical of anything that's done on this city. No doubt. And so, I mean, it's just been endless. I've heard from everyone in my life about it and a lot of other people. But um, nationally, you know, to get the New York Times to write a great review and the Washington Post and um, the Golden Globes, uh, it's, it's really an, a, a nice little cherry on top for everything we've done. Yeah, look, and, and I, I'm not kidding when I say this. I think it is stunningly good. I loved it. I told you, my wife, who is a great teacher and has been for 30 years, my wife, her line was, everybody needs to watch this. That's yeah. all. And she could care less about <laughs> football. And I thought the football <laughs> stuff was good, too. No, look, I got one more thing for you. Like, like, Rod Walker from The Advocate and I were talking, and we've seen you, but we didn't quite know who you were until we saw this. And I'm guessing there's probably a lot of people like that. What no. kind of reception are you getting? What are you hearing personally? Look, we knew who Bryce was, and Bryce is who Bryce is, right. and everybody knows that. But I gotta, my guess is you've gotten blown up more <laughs> of, of the people that maybe were under the radar before. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I think people are finding out my personality. I have a lot of people, you know, old parents, my, my family that doesn't know or see me at practice. I'm like, oh, we didn't know you were so aggressive. And we didn't know you were so <laughs> detailed. And, but, you know, I play my role. And I think any good staff, just like over here, with what you guys do, there are people that you can name all day that play a role that's so immensely important, but you don't see them. And I think I'm the behind the camera guy. And, you know, to make Bryce's job easier, to make those kids and our assistant coach's job a little easier, I try to do my job uh, at a 10 every day. And so, I, you know, I'm kind of like the voice of the team at times. You know, Bryce has so much going on in the building and outside the building that um, Monday through Thursday, I kind of take control of the team and then he addresses them on Friday. 
But before we go to practice every day, they hear my voice. When they leave practice every day, I'm the last voice they hear. And then, you know, Bryce has a lot of different things that he does. And so uh, I think it took us years to perfect what we do, and, and we're still trying to get better at it. But, yeah, I, I, I've received uh, <laughs> some great attention. <laughs> I got to say, even when you hear him, I mean, he's such an incredible person, yeah. and I'm so happy we were able to highlight him and the other coaches. But he's talking as if this is his full-time job, and it's not. Right, uh, right. You know, this is mostly volunteer. I mean, more than half the coaches are volunteer. Norm, you know, he has a regular job in the day that he goes to. Yeah. And when you're around them and you see the way, the way they treat this, it's like, how, how are you able to do anything else in your life with how much you're giving here for, for this community and these kids? Yeah, it's, it's a, look, it's a stunning piece in New Orleans. Congratulations to both of Thank you, you. For, for being part of it. I, th I think it paints a, like a realistic, smart picture. Hopefully it's a blueprint for how we can get better and do yeah. things differently. Exactly. And, and sometimes you got to see a picture before you can fix something. And, and and the way this is laid out is just beautiful. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, I mean, thank this you. series is incredible. We're back with more. Fourth down on four in a minute.